So the other three videos may have been a little bit simpler, trying to find area and perimeter of your regular basic shapes, rectangles, triangles, and circles. But what happens if we have an irregular shape where we have multiple shapes kind of mashed together? How do we find the area or the perimeter of those types of shapes? We have to remember what we've already learned because we're going to use those concepts and we're going to um, hopefully logically work through this. And I have a couple shapes up here that we can kind of go through so you can learn the process. So the first shape we have, say it's the floor plan. You're going to be pouring the foundation of a house or whatever and you want to know um, the distance around the house. And then, of course, the square footage of the house or a garage or whatever this shape reminds you of. So we have some missing pieces of information here. So we have six sides total, but we only have four lengths. Do we have enough information to get the area and the perimeter? We do, but we have to fill in the missing pieces. So we know this overall length is 40 and this length is 20. So 40 minus 20 gives us 20 left over for this length. And we're gonna do the same thing right here. If this whole length is 48, and then this is 20, what's left over? 28, so 28 plus 20 equals 48. So in order to get the perimeter, you need to find those missing lengths, and then just add all those sides up, all six sides. So if it's a six-sided shape, a seven-sided shape, an eight-sided shape, when you're getting a perimeter, you just add all those sides. To get the area, there's two ways you can do this, okay? So one way is to break this in to two smaller um, rectangles, and that's called decomposition or decomposing it. So you're, you're breaking it down. So you're breaking it down into two smaller ones with 28 times 20 for this one, and then 20 times 48 for this one. So you do the 28 times 20, and then add it to the 48 times 20. You'd add those two areas together. So you're still using the same formula, but you're just using it on two rectangles and then adding them together. Now, the other way you can do this, and I don't know how everyone visualizes their shapes, the other way that you can do this, instead of decomposing it, is pretend that this is one giant rectangle with 40 times 48 and just get the whole area to take the two longest sides, multiply those, and then subtract the part that's not included. So 20 by 20 is the size of the part that's not included. So just get the overall total of the whole big rectangle and then subtract the part that or subtract the area that doesn't belong. So you can either decompose it into two small rectangles and then add the areas or get the total overall area and subtract the part that's not included. So those same concepts are going to apply to these two shapes as well. Only in this one, um, I'm missing a piece of information here. I'll say that this is six units here. Okay. So to get the... Um, perimeter of this shape. So say it's just the, the front of the house and we want to um, know how far around the house is. I don't know why we would want to know that, but <laughs> you would know that this side is six and this side is six. So you'd add the two sixes together. This side is eight and this side is eight. So you'd add those two eights together and then you have the five. So you would put in all your missing pieces of information, add up all the sides, and then you get your perimeter. But to get the area you're going to have to break this into a rectangle and a triangle. So you're going to do 8 times 5 to get the area of the rectangle. 8 times 5. And to get the um, area of the triangle, we have to get the base. Now the base is right here, but I don't have a dimension. So what's the base? Well, it's going to be the same as this. <laughs> So just because there might not be a dimension where we want there to be one, look for it somewhere else and see if there's a logical way to find that missing piece of information. So if, if this right here is five units long, then we know that this right here is going to be five units long. 
So we can say that the base is five and we're gonna multiply it by the height of the triangle, not the length of the side, but the height from the base to the top. Okay, so from the base to the top is four. So five times four, and then remember we have to divide by two. Five times four is 20, 20 divided by two is 10. So we're gonna add eight times five, which is 40, to your 10, and that'll give you the total area. So you're just decomposing this or turning it into two separate shapes, finding the area of each shapes, uh, of each of the shapes, and then adding those two areas together to get the total area. The same thing for our last shape, which can be a little bit trickier because now we're dealing with a circle and a rectangle, okay? So that's the first thing you wanna do is realize which shapes you're working with. So in this one, we're working with two rectangles. In this one, we're working with a rectangle and a triangle. And in this one, a rectangle and a circle. So identify the shapes that you're gonna be working with so that way you can know what formulas you're gonna be using. So the first thing that we know is to get the perimeter, um, we have to add all the sides together. So we know that this is 21, which means this is gonna be 21. But what's this? This is not here. Well, if our radius is eight, our radius is half of our diameter. So if this is eight, then this is eight. So eight plus eight equals 16. So now we can add 21 plus 16 plus 21. But what is this right here? How do we get the circumference of this area, the perimeter? So the first thing we have to recognize is this is not a whole circle. It's a semicircle or half of a circle. So when you get the circumference, you got to divide it by two because it's not the circumference of a whole circle. It's the half or half of a circumference. So remember to get the circumference of the circle is diameter times pi. So the diameter we said is 16. So you're gonna do 16 times pi, but that's gonna get you the circumference of a whole circle. We only want half of it. So then you're gonna divide that answer by two, okay? The other way, the easy way, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but another way to get the um, length around this semicircle is just to do the radius times pi. If you do radius times pi, that'll give you the same thing. So instead of doing a 16 divided by two, just do an eight, and then you don't even have to divide by two because you're kind of dividing the diameter by two at the beginning. So just a couple different ways to figure out the circumference of half of a circle, okay? Now, how do we calculate the area? So we're gonna use those same concepts, two shapes. When we find the area of this circle, what are we gonna do at the end? Because it's only half of a circle, we're gonna to have to divide by two. So we're gonna get the area of this rectangle. The area of the rectangle is gonna be 16 times 21. So we're just multiplying one side by the other. To get the area of a circle, remember, we're gonna do pi r squared. So we're going to have to do pi times 8 squared. 8 squared is 64. Now you can either do pi times 64 divided by 2, or you can go ahead and just divide that 64 by 2 right away. And 64 divided by 2 is going to be 32. And then you can do pi times 32. However you want to do it, it's up to you. Um, but just remember that if you're dealing with a semicircle, to get the circumference of a semicircle, you have to divide by two because it's only halfway around. And the same thing with the area. Calculate the area, use the formula, pi r squared, but then divide that answer by two because we're only using half of the circle. So we're not getting the whole area of a circle, only half of it. And when you're getting half of something, you're dividing it by two. So these are just a couple of examples, hopefully that will um, give you uh, a good foundation for working your way through irregular shapes. So just take your time and look at the shapes that are being used and see if you can logically um, decompose or, or pull those shapes apart, find the perimeter and area and, 
and add everything together um, in the appropriate ways. And hopefully um, you'll be able to do the, do the homework problems um, on your own. So I, that's what I'm hoping is that you'll be able to work through these. Um, even though this isn't a whole lot of algebra, <laughs> this is more geometry. When you're dealing with the irregular shapes, the irregular shapes um, use problem solving ability. It uses that critical thinking or that logic and you use that all the time in algebra. So these shapes, see if you can work through them. If you do have problems and you just get totally get stuck and you just don't understand what you're doing, obviously please reach out to me. I don't want you to get frustrated. But this is gonna be a really good exercise to get your brain ready for math too um, because we use that problem solving ability all the time in, uh, in algebra.